subscribe to our channel, and hit the bell icon, to never miss a video from us. Suppose you work for a company doing medical research, and you're responsible for managing the on-premises servers. The servers you administer, run all the company infrastructure, from web servers to databases. However, the hardware is aging, and starting to struggle, to keep up with some of the new data analysis applications being deployed to it. You could upgrade all the hardware, but that's not appealing for several reasons. 1. The servers are physically scattered all around, with minimal staff in each location. You'd like to centralize the upgrade to the home office. 2. The company runs custom data analysis software, on several versions of Windows and Linux, sometimes, set up with odd configurations, that aren't entirely understood. You need a way to test the deployments completely, and try different configurations, to make sure everything is working before the transition. 3. Business is booming, and the company is growing fast. It's likely that the load on the internal servers, particularly, the databases, will continue to grow, requiring your company to either buy for the future, or come up with a scaling plan to handle the growth. For these reasons, you decide that it's time to explore the cloud, to see if it can help solve the load and scale problem. Since you have a bunch of mixed servers and custom software, it makes sense to look at trying to move servers one at a time into Azure using Azure Virtual Machines. Azure VMs, are one of several types of on-demand scalable computing resources that Azure offers. With VMs, you have total control over the configuration, and can install anything you need to perform the work. You don't need to purchase physical hardware when you need to scale, or extend your data center. Azure provides additional services to monitor, secure, and manage updates and patches to the OS. Performing a migration of on-premises servers to Azure, requires planning and care. You can move them all at once, or more likely, in small batches or even individually. Before you create a single VM, you should sit down, and sketch out your current infrastructure model, and see how it might map to the cloud. Let's walk through a checklist of things to think about. Start with the network. Name the VM. Decide the location for the VM. Determine the size of the VM. Understanding the pricing model. Storage for the VM. Select an operating system. The first thing you should think about isn't the virtual machine at all, it's the network. Virtual networks are used in Azure to provide private connectivity between Azure Virtual Machines and other Azure services. VMs and services that are part of the same virtual network can access one another. By default, services outside the virtual network cannot connect to services within virtual network. You can, however, configure the network to allow access to the external service, including your on-premises servers. Once you have mapped out your communication and network requirements, you can start thinking about the VMs you want to create. A good plan is to select a server and take an inventory. We can then start to answer some of the questions Azure will have for a new virtual machine. What does the server communicate with? Which ports are open? Which OS is used? How much disk space is in use? What kind of data does this use? Are there restrictions, legal or otherwise, with not having it on premises? What sort of CPU, memory, and disk IO load does the server have? Is there a burst traffic to account for? You should choose names that are meaningful and consistent, so you can easily identify what the VM does. Just like a physical computer in your data center, VMs have several elements that are needed to do their job. Thus we need to create an Azure resource, which will have the following elements. 1. The VM itself. 2. Storage account for the disks. 3. Virtual network. 4. Network interface to communicate on the network. 5. Network security group to secure the network traffic. 6. Public internet address. The Azure portal provides an easy to use, browser-based user interface, that allows you to create, and manage all your Azure resources. Let's assume, you want to create a VM, running an Ubuntu server. Setting up a site isn't difficult, but there are a couple of things to keep in mind. You need to install and configure, an operating system, configure a website, install a database, and worry about things like firewalls. To create a virtual machine using Azure Portal, you need to perform the following steps. 1. Sign into the Azure Portal. 2. Click on the Create a Resource option, in the top left corner of the Portal page. 
the Azure Marketplace pane will open. 3. Use Search the Marketplace search bar to find Ubuntu Server. You see a list of options. Select the option that reads Ubuntu Server 18.04 LTS as shown below. 4. The pane that opens next presents licensing information for the image we're about to use. Click Create. Now we need to configure the basic parameters of our Ubuntu Virtual Machine. If some of the options at this point are unfamiliar to you, that's okay. You'll learn all of these options in the complete AZ-104 course. You're welcome to copy the values used here. 1. Use the following values on the Basics tab. The subscription should be set to Concierge Subscription. The Resource Group should be set to Resource Group Name. Enter the Virtual Machine Name as Test Ubuntu Cus VM. Select a region close to you from the following list. For availability options, choose no infrastructure redundancy required. The image should be the Ubuntu Server 18.04 LTS option we selected from the marketplace. Check to make sure the size of the VM set is standard D2S V3. For the authentication type, switch to password. Enter your username and password. 2. There are several other tabs you can explore to see the settings you can influence during the VM creation. Once you're finished exploring, click Review plus Create to review and validate the settings. 3. On the Review screen, Azure will validate your settings. You might need to supply some additional information based on the requirements of the image creator. Verify all the settings are set the way you want, and then click Create to deploy and create the VM. 4. You can monitor the deployment through the Notifications panel. Click the icon in the top toolbar to show or hide the panel. 5. The VM deployment process takes a few minutes to complete. You'll receive a notification informing you that the deployment succeeded. Click on the Go to Resource button to go to the VM Overview page. 6. Here you can see all the information and configuration options for your newly created Ubuntu VM. One of the pieces of information is the public IP address. 7. By default, Ubuntu Server 18.04 LTS image doesn't install any reachable public services on the public IP address. However, recall that when you enabled password authentication in an earlier step, the UI also gave an option to enable SSH. SSH allows you to connect to your VM via public IP using any SSH client. The Azure portal is the easiest way to create resources such as VMs when you are getting started. However, it's not necessarily the most efficient or quickest way to work with Azure, particularly if you need to create several resources together. Some other ways to create and administer resources in Azure. Azure Resource Manager. Azure PowerShell. Azure CLI. Azure REST API. Azure Client SDK. Azure VM Extensions. Let's assume you wanted to create a copy of a VM with the same settings. You could create a VM image, upload it to Azure and reference it as the basis for your new VM. This process is inefficient and time-consuming. Azure provides you with the option to create a template from which to create an exact copy of a VM. Resource Manager templates are JSON files that define the resources you need to deploy for your solution. You can create resource templates, from the Settings section, for a specific VM by selecting the Export Template option. You have the option to save the resource template for later use or immediately deploy a new VM based on this template. Creating administration scripts is a powerful way to optimize your workflow. You can automate everyday repetitive tasks, and once a script has been verified, it will run consistently, likely reducing errors. Azure PowerShell is ideal for one-off interactive tasks and the automation of repeated tasks. For example, you can use AZVM to create a new Azure Virtual Machine. As shown here, you supply various parameters to handle the large number of VM configuration settings available. Most of the parameters have reasonable values, you only need to specify the required parameters. Another option for scripting and command line Azure interaction is the Azure CLI. Like Azure PowerShell, the Azure CLI is a powerful way to streamline your administrative workflow. Unlike Azure PowerShell, the Azure CLI does not need PowerShell to function. For example, you can create an Azure VM with the AZVM create command. Generally speaking, both Azure PowerShell and Azure CLI are good options, if you have simple scripts to run and want to stick to command line tools. When it comes to more complex scenarios, where, 
The creation and management of VMs form part of a larger application, with complex logic, another approach is needed. You can interact with every type of resource in Azure programmatically. The Azure REST API, provides developers with operations, categorized by resource as well as the ability to create and manage VMs. The Azure Compute APIs, give you programmatic access to virtual machines and their supporting resources. With this API, you have operations too. Create and manage availability sets. Add and manage virtual machine extensions. Create and manage managed disks, snapshots, and images. Access the platform images available in Azure. Retrieve usage information of your resources. Create and manage virtual machines. Create and manage virtual machine scale sets. The Azure Client SDK encapsulates the Azure REST API, making it much easier for developers to interact with Azure. The Azure Client SDKs are available for a variety of languages and frameworks, including .NET-based languages such as C-Sharp, Java, Node.js, PHP, Python, Ruby, and Go. Here's an example snippet of C-Sharp code to create an Azure VM. Here's the same snippet in Java using the Azure Java SDK. Azure VM extensions are small applications that allow you to configure and automate tasks on Azure VMs after initial deployment. Azure VM extensions can be run with the Azure CLI, PowerShell, Azure Resource Manager templates, and the Azure Portal. You bundle extensions with a new VM deployment or run them against an existing system. Azure Backup is a backup as a service offering that protects physical or virtual machines no matter where they reside, on-premises or in the cloud. Azure Backup can be used for a wide range of data backup scenarios. Files and folders on Windows OS machines, physical or virtual, local or cloud. Application-aware snapshots. Popular Microsoft Server workloads such as Microsoft SQL Server, Microsoft SharePoint, and Microsoft Exchange. Native support for Azure Virtual Machines, both Windows, and Linux. Linux and Windows 10 Client Machines. Let's now use the Azure Portal, to deploy a Linux Virtual Machine, running Ubuntu 18.04 LTS. To see your VM in action, you also SSH to the VM and install the NGINX web server. First you'll need an SSH key pair. Open a bash shell, and use SSH key gen, to create an SSH key pair. If you don't have a bash shell on your local computer, you can use the Azure Cloud shell. Let's create an SSH key pair. 1. Sign into the Azure portal. 2. In the menu at the top of the page, select the shown icon to open Cloud shell. 3. Make sure, the Cloud shell says bash in the upper left. If it says PowerShell, use the drop-down to select Bash and select Confirm to change to the Bash shell. 4. Type the shown text to create the SSH key. 5. You'll be prompted to enter a file in which to save the key pair. Just press Enter to save in the default location, listed in brackets. 6. You'll be asked to enter a passphrase. You can type a passphrase for your SSH key or press Enter to continue without a passphrase. 7. The SSH keygen command generates public and private keys, with the default name. The command returns the full path to the public key. Use the path to the public key to display its contents with cat by typing the shown text. 8. Copy the output of this command, and save it somewhere to use later in this article. This is your public key, and you will need it when configuring your administrator account, to log into your VM. Let's now create a Linux virtual machine with Azure Portal. 1. Type virtual machines in the search. 2. Under services, select virtual machines. 3. In the virtual machines page, select add. The create a virtual machine page opens. 4. In the basics tab, under project details, make sure the correct subscription is selected and then choose to create new resource group. Type my resource group for the name. 5. Under instance details, Type my VM for the virtual machine name, choose East US for your region, and choose Ubuntu 18.04 LTS for your image. Leave the other defaults. 6. Under Administrator Account, select SSH Public Key, type your username, then paste in your public key. Remove any leading or trailing white space in your public key. 7. 
leave the remaining defaults and then select the review plus create button at the bottom of the page. 8. On the create a virtual machine page, you can see the details about the VM you are about to create. When you are ready, select create. Let's now connect to the virtual machine. We'll create an SSH connection with the VM. 1. Select the connect button on the overview page for your VM. 2. In the connect to virtual machine page, keep the default options to connect by IP address over port 22. In login, using VM local account, a connection command is shown. Select the button to copy the command. The following example shows what the SSH connection command looks like. 3. Using the same bash shell you use to create your SSH key pair, paste the SSH connection command into the shell to create an SSH session. To see your VM in action, install the NGINX web server. From your SSH session, update your package sources and then install the latest package. Use a web browser of your choice to view the default NGINX welcome page. Type the public IP address of the VM as the web address. The public IP address can be found on the VM overview page or as part of the SSH connection string you used earlier. For more such videos, subscribe to our channel.